Uh, I'm Anna and I'm with Mark Smith at Just Tonic in Leicester. Um, are you looking forward to tonight's gig? To tonight, I am looking forward to tonight's gig, Anna. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are here at Leicester, aren't we, Just the Tonic? Yes, and it's, we are. It's really cold and it's the first Christmas gig of the uh, season. Mm? Call it a season, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the first yeah. Christmas gig, so all the people downstairs are all in their like, Christmas hats and whatnot. So I'm a bit worried. Are you going to wear a Santa hat? I pr yeah, actually I might do that. Become one of those guys. Yeah, be that guy. I don't guy. want to be that guy. No, I don't want to be that guy. You'll wreck your lovely bouffant hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is my hat. I was wearing a hat earlier, not a Christmas hat, a regular sort of a baseball hat, because cool guy. <laughs> I just ruined the old uh, barnet. Normally it's just shaved, but wearing the hat has made it. Cool. That's not true. It's a lie. It's a lie. Cool. <laughs> Um, your show is called The Most Astonishing Name in Comedy. Yeah. Um, apart from your name, what's, astoni what's an astonishing thing you can tell us about yourself? Wow. Well, you started off with like a nice, just like a nice looking forward to the gig question, and then you've got what's the most astonishing thing about yourself. Yeah. Most um, astonishing thing about myself? I mean, there's literally nothing. I'm the most normal... My name is Mark Smith, that's what the whole show's about, is I'm just like... What is that? It's the most. If you were just to guess someone's name, you could guess it in like three or four goes. You'd be like, oh, what's your name? Guess it. They'll say, um, John Smith. No, Mark Smith. Got it. <laughs> There's nothing astonishing about any aspects of me. Uh, so come to the show. Uh, <laughs> that's how you plug it. My plugging quality. That's what's astonishing. Yeah. I'm trying to use that as a way to get you into the show. But do come along. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, you're really boring. <laughs> Probably off stage, yeah. On stage, I'm a bit more up for it. I've heard that from comedians. Have you? Yeah, that they're yeah. like just really boring in person, but on stage, they're quite good. I mean, you said boring, I said normal. Sorry. You've gone with that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just normal. the act at the start of the yeah, interview. Yeah, that's alright. Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, I think that is quite normal to be. You can't be on all the time, though, can you? You can't like, be. No. Nah. I guess if you, uh, if you work in a factory, you're probably on a lot more in your social time than you are when you're one of the. At work, but this is this job is like phew, switched around like that, I suppose. Yeah, cool. I reckon. So, the short answer nothing is astonishing apart from the show. Come and see the show, uh, 21st of February, Duffy's Bar, uh, Mark Smith, the most astonishing name in comedy. Sweet. Um, so, when you were on Russell Howard's Good News, you talked about a uh, stupid made up shit that you tell your sister. <laughs> is that true? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um yeah, so I have a bit, we should probably see tonight to be honest, a bit about things that I make up, um, the stupid facts and stuff that I make up and tell my sister and then try and get her to believe. Uh, and I won't tell you them now, but they're, they're quite good, they're quite, stu they are true as well, yeah. they are three things that I have told her. And she's like a lot older than me. It's one of those fun things though, if you've got like a sister or a, a sibling, I guess, is just to sort of wind them up and see just how far you can push it. Yeah. Best thing is when you have like, if you're with kids, kids have no concept of time. So when you make up something, like recently, I was at my godfather's house and he's got a little kid who's like five or something. And I, he's into World War II stuff for some reason. Inexplicably, this kid is into World War II stuff. So I told him I was a Luftwaffe pilot. But they've got no concept of time. Or like, so I could well have been in the Luftwaffe. Or I could well have been like, I don't know, around in Julius Caesar times. He had no idea. Yeah. So you can push it further with kids. Yeah. In that way. My friend's older brothers, um, when he was younger, would run up to him in the middle of summer and be like, It's Christmas! Brilliant. And he'd go nuts and like run downstairs <laughs> and then cry all day. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> Heartwarming story. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Um, are you looking forward to performing at the Leicester Comedy Festival? Because you've been here quite a few times, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I do like Leicester a lot. Um, the Comedy Festival in particular, it's like, everyone's really up for it. Like, it always seems to sell well. I guess because there's not really a festival. It's the biggest festival in England, right? Um, but the, the, the audiences are always good, always up for it. Uh, shows are always like well attended. It's just a good place to do it. Also, it's in the middle of the country, so you get comics from all over the place coming mm. to do it because it's pretty convenient, really. And also, it's good because you can do. You can do like you can. The audiences are nice enough that you can sort of try bits that maybe you couldn't elsewhere. They're sort of they're into their comedy, mm. so they understand if you're doing something a bit different. Yeah. You know, so that's really good to have that as a sort of platform for trying, not trying new stuff, but for trying different stuff. Yeah. So that's really good to have. A lot of people, well, a lot of comedians, obviously, it's like a warm-up act for Edinburgh, which is a bit. A little bit. I, I don't know. Like mine, 
I think mine's basically going to be sort of half of my last show and then half of the next show. Mm. I'm going to do the best bits from both. Yeah. <laughs> so you get the best experience on the 21st at Duffy's Bar. <laughs> Um, what is the weirdest thing that's happened to you during one of your performances? Uh, I had a lady um, just weigh herself on the front row before. Just sat there or...? Just went for it. She was laughing, I think it was weeing, I don't think it was like a protest against the show. She actually wet herself laughing? Yeah, I think so. That's like a massive compliment. Yeah, it didn't seem like it. <laughs> like, I, I prefer clapping and, <laughs> and laughing. <laughs> But don't, don't, don't piss all over that. I'm literally like right by my feet. And it was on one of those stages which um, it was like it was just rake seating, so it was floor and then seat, so you could just, yeah. Did you like bring it up or did you just kind of ignore it? I had to bring it up. Yeah. Because a woman had pissed herself on the front row, as I say. Was she embarrassed or? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a while ago this as well, but it's, it's the weirdest thing I think that's happened. A friend of mine was, um, when he was little, he's a comedian, when he was little, he uh, would go to see his grandma at a nursing home and or great grandma whatever it was and he was like seven at the time and he used to do like little songs and dances for the old folk when he was there and he's a funny guy and he's always been a funny guy and he did one that was really funny and some old lady had a heart attack pretty good oh, less, less, that as good. <laughs> less messy than piss yeah and also you know it's a good way to go if, you, if you're gonna she didn't die actually but if you were gonna die that's a great way to die right? that is you true. die laughing laughing at a seven year old dancing yeah, but what, like, pissing yourself to death, that's a different, <laughs> don't, well, don't piss yourself to death, just life, just life tips. Life tips by mm. Mark Smith. Mm. That's the next year's show, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pissing yourself to death <laughs> with Mark Smith. Um, what, what would you be doing if you weren't a comedian? Um, well, I think if I hadn't done comedy at all, at any point, if I'd never got into it, I'd be doing something like... I don't know. Advertising? That sounds really shit though, doesn't it? I like the thought it's of it, but I think in, in practice, it's, I think a lot of the time the people are a bit shitty. Yeah. But now I've done comedy, if I stop doing comedy, I'd want to stay within comedy and just like do something else but within the same industry, I think. Yeah. I, I really like it, and if I can, I'd like to have a career in it, whatever, however the way that sort of turns out. I'd be doing it still when I'm sort of 50 or 60. Not necessarily performing, but doing something with it. Yeah. I think. What? I don't know. Ask me. If, ask me in thirty years. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back. Yeah. We're all working for big radio stations. You'll also be a demon, <laughs> and I'll be doing the exact same thing. <laughs> and the we'll room might have had like a lip of paint, but that'll be it. It'll be the same. <laughs> the same room. Um, well, thank you for talking to me, Matt. Oh, was that it? Yeah. That's oh, all thank the you for having me. Have. Uh, looking forward to the show tonight, and good luck at the festival. Well, thanks very much. Twenty-first Duffy's Bar. Uh, go to it. Thanks guys.